Roman Scandal, Episode 4, The Orgies of Bacchus. Around 180 BC, the patricians launched a witch hunt against a lower-class cult centered on Bacchanalian rites, which had more to do with upper-class paranoia than any tangible threat to the existence of Rome. During the consulship of Postumius Albinus and Marcius Philippus, these men spearheaded an investigation into secret conspiracies traced to a lower-class Greek who came to Etruria as a hierophant of secret nocturnal mysteries, so secret that nobody then or now knows what they were. The consuls found that Bacchus had attracted followers with wine. As the historian Livy wrote, when they were heated with wine and the nightly commingling of men and women, those of tender age with their seniors, and extinguishing all sense of modesty, debaucheries of every kind commenced. Each had pleasures at hand to satisfy the lust he was most prone to. Nor was the mischief confined to the promiscuous intercourse of men and women. False witness, the forging of seals and testaments, and false information all proceeded from the same source. A teenager named Abusius had a next-door neighbor named Hispala Ficenia, a prostitute and freedwoman well known around the Aventine. She claimed to have personally witnessed Bacchic initiations. She warned Abusius that the adherents of Bacchus only recruited persons under the age of 20 and forced them to endure and then to commit every conceivable outrage. His parents wanted him to be initiated, but he refused. This case, Abusius reported to Consul Postumius. Hispala was questioned by Consul Postumius and his mother-in-law, Sulpicia. Hispala said she had been initiated in the grove of Simula, but begged to tell no more, because her conversations with Abutius were only to scare him. Hispala said that when the priestess Pacula Ania opened the cult to men, according to Livy, the mysteries had assumed this promiscuous character, and men were mingled with women with all the license of nocturnal orgies, and there was no crime, no deed of shame wanting. More uncleanness was wrought by men with men than with women. Whoever would not submit to defilement or shrank from violating others was sacrificed as a victim. To regard nothing as impious or criminal was the very sum of their religion. Posthumius then obtained senatorial power to investigate further. He publicly stated in the forum that women formed the great majority of the cult, and this was the source of all the mischief. He claimed the males committed and submitted to the foulest uncleanness, frantic and frenzied, driven out of their senses by sleepless nights, by wine, by nocturnal shouting, and uproars. Posthumius also stated that where crimes are sheltered under the name of religion, there is fear lest in punishing the hypocrisy of men we are doing violence to something holy which is mixed up with it. He said, All that we shall do will be done with the sanction of the gods. It appears the ruling class was frightened of losing control because the lower class people were practicing a foreign religion and having unregulated sex at night. The Senate ordered people to turn informant and name names. The witch hunt brought in 7,000 suspects. Many were put to death, as Livy relates. Those who had polluted themselves by outrage and murder, those who had stained themselves by giving false evidence, forging seals and wills, and by other fraudulent practices, were sentenced to death. The number of those executed exceeded the number of those sentenced to imprisonment. There was an enormous number of men, as well as women, in both classes. The women who had been found guilty were handed over to their relatives or guardians to be dealt with privately. If there was no one capable of inflicting punishment, they were executed publicly. Thus, families were expected to kill their daughters in private executions as punishment for... What exactly? Needless to say, the rites of Bacchus were prohibited, their shrines destroyed. Informers were monetarily rewarded by the consuls, Hispala was given the right to marry a freeborn citizen out of her clan. Ebusius was exempted from military conscription, 
and both were given 10,000 denarii as a reward.